dad and I are going to get ice cream. What flavor, Pete? Chocolate. So I made it home, got all showered up and cleaned. Looks like I'm on time. I'll be able to make it to this talk today. I'm doing one of my favorite things to do. It's talk about all the cool things that we do in schools today. And I'm headed there right now. I'll be posting it, so make sure you keep your eyes and ears open. See ya. <laughs> Hi, today I'll be sharing some M-Learning tips. Just about five years ago, my son was on TV for his first time. He was 10 then, and I remember after it aired, I asked him, Ty, did your friends at school see you on TV? And he said, Dad, my friends don't really watch TV. So I asked him, what do they do? And I made a note in my phone of what he said. Then I set out to make my teaching fit with what he told me. And do you know what he told me they did? Ty said they watched YouTube play Clash of Clans and manage fantasy sports teams. Oddly, not a whole lot has changed about what's popular since then. It's been five years, but not a lot of teachers allow students to play games and watch vlogs still. So my question has always been, why not? If our learners love these things and they continue to grow in popularity, then why not leverage these technologies and interests in schools? During the school year, I spend my lunch each day with 30 students. This year, they decided we'll call it Game Club. We do four things in Game Club. YouTube, Fantasy Sports, Eat, and now Clash Royale. It's more popular than clans. It's the most social part of our day. I learn from them about vlogging and gaming, and they learn from me about what's appropriate, good, bad. We work as role models in these informal, self-directed settings. But I decided I won't stop there. If we've learned anything since Web 2.0, it's that when we talk, not everyone listens. So I decided to take the next step. I decided I'm going to be a creator, a YouTuber, a vlogger, a risk taker. Having learned in my PLN from Brad Curry with hashtag EduRisk, it's that we must take risks. The sense of community that I see Game Club and YouTubing Risk create are unlike any teaching strategy I've ever experienced. We've all seen that little upload button many times. Don't lie no matter how talented you are. You've still gone on YouTube looking at DIY videos, makeup tutorials, or how to put your kids Spongebob and Patrick Star home together. And our students are doing this too. That's what self-directed learning is all about. But here's the problem. It's inauthentic to use traditional ed tech for experiencing the authentic self-directed learning that learners want. Mobile technology is best for this. That's how our learners access it in their own free time. It's on demand anytime, anywhere. 
but making mobile content is not as simple as digitizing an old worksheet or lesson. It's much bigger. Now here's the catch. We're thinking too small when creating micro content. But we didn't have YouTube until 2006, smartphones until 2007, and tablets until 2010. Looking at the big picture, it's new to all of us. Let me explain. First, there's no worse idea in education today than the idea that social media is bad, and that is what's ruining our students. Social media shifts and dictates culture more than anything else in the world, including schools. So we need to think big about how we use it. It's all about reaching a broader audience. There might be some new problems, but these are not problems we can't solve. Every school has staffs with thousands of years of combined experience. And when we do, we will open up a new way of connecting learners and building communities of learners that John Dewey had never dreamed of. So focus on these three things to build superior micro content. First, be organic. This is the most important thing about making micro content. You can't just digitize old materials. We must recreate and make new authentic content. It should uniquely reflect you, the creator. Now let's circle back to that simple but beautiful little upload button from YouTube. Everyone in this world can click that button at any moment. It's always there. It's an amazing thing that's never existed before. We all have access to the same things if we leverage tools like that upload button or this share button correctly then you too can be here where I am right now pushing people to make incredible changes in schools. By showing learners how to be digital citizens who learn independently with mobile, when we think big about the content we create, we model what these tools can and should be used for. It does not matter what tools you choose to create with. Every tool is great in its own way. I'll be posting this talk as a mobile learning YouTube video this morning and I urge you to please share it with your social networks by clicking that button and using these amazing tools. Thank you again. I'm Gary Brady.